All right, time to get started here. Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm doing something a little bit different where this entire live stream is going to be about crafting energy shield gear. And to start with, I'm going to buy just a couple more bases because I wanted to have a good mix of stuff. And the only thing that I have not bought yet are the shaper shields because for some reason it took way longer than it should have to buy all of the fossils. Let's see how much these are. I suspect they're going to be expensive since I'm looking for 100% base percent shaper influenced titanium spirit shields. Oh, they're quite reasonable actually. One is 50, 50 chaos <laughs> in tab cheap. Yeah, that is cheap. <laughs> I completely agree. I would assume that's because right now, if you're not using a unique shield in many cases, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> which is why I'm not buying very many of these. Hey, it's going good. How are you? I remember a time when shaper shields were the thing to do or the thing to craft in terms of ES gear. And now it's just like, yeah, you could, but it's not going to be the best. It's just going to be okay. Going to buy a couple more though. I like how that's 100 chaos in stash tab price 30x. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but sadly, they're AFK, so I'll buy a couple more for 1x each, which will bring my total costs up a bit, but that's okay. All in the name of science. And so that means just going to denote how much this cost in case I make a video summary later. Okay, person, please trade me because I have someone else looking to trade me. How's it going, Vertex? Okay, I don't know what's up with this guy. <laughs> they uh, seem to be a little bit slow to trade. I'll give him a minute. At least the other person I'm trading with is understanding. <laughs> yeah, I find it really funny when people change the value of a buy whisper because... Okay, that explains it. I'm glad they said something because I was getting concerned. But yeah, uh, because of how I have my stash tab set up, it's super funny because most of the time they will message me for one of these. And the price of the item in these is always this. I've had, hey, I want to buy your item listed for 10 chaos in price 119. It's like, I don't do trades for 10 chaos. And then I report them to TFT. Because anyone doing that, you can report them to TFT. And if it's a credible report, they will be blacklisted. All right. <laughs> I'm slightly confused as to where this item went because they seem to be having a hard time finding it. I wonder if a trade site's just that slow because last night I was getting messages for items that had literally sold a day ago. It was uh, very annoying because I kept having to tell someone, no, that's sold. And a couple times it was things that I had repeats of. <laughs> and yeah. All right, well, they found it. Here we go. 
Item level 86, 77%. Yeah. Need something? Yep, this is what I wanted. There we go. Trading all done. See, even when stuff goes wrong, most of the time, trading isn't nearly as bad as people say. Like, yeah, sometimes you have bad experiences, but here, I was trying to buy something, someone couldn't find the item, I was trying to trade someone else, everyone was chill. It's great. And this is, honestly, 99% of my experience with trading. I think it's just that sometimes the 1% bad stuff stands out way more than it should. Yeah. It's still spaghetti code. I don't think anyone can defend PoE from having spaghetti code. <laughs> but you're right, it isn't that common. So here I have my tab full of stuff. The reason I have these Crusader Exalted Orbs is I want to Crusader Slam some belts. I haven't 100% decided which method I'm going to be using. But yeah, here we go. All my stuff. To start with, I'm going to go into what to do to prep this Val Regalia for crafting. Because this is a very high value base. It's an item level 100, 100% base perfection, and it's six linked. For random crafting fodder, probably shouldn't have bought this, but I did. It cost me one exalt, which feels, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I made a hundred X off of my last video. I don't really care how much this costs, but it's more of, I care how much things cost because I don't want to waste money. And since this is going to become two six links, this saves you a ton of money versus crafting on a base and linking it yourself later. The only reason that I didn't get more of them is the other people with six link bases were not answering. <laughs> Yeah, 1x, usually okay. Although, I don't have that much trouble with price fixers, because, to be honest, I just don't buy a lot of cheap items. I buy most of my cheap items in bulk. And if you're buying from someone who has, like, 600 of them, they're probably going to answer. What would I do for a build on a level 100 Scion? I would probably do Ward Loop. Because Ward Loop is a very good build, very complicated, which makes it fun to make. And it's probably not going to exist in 319. I think Scion's still the best for it. So first thing to do to prep. You need to come over here and take out some fossils. Because I want to get the quality up. The reason I want to do it here as opposed to Hillock or corrupting it later is it is way easier when you're going to split the item to roll it to close to perfect quality. See, I could stop on 28. 28 is good. Because this base is spectacular, I'm going to try to be greedy and probably regret it as I burn through a bunch of fossils. 28 is honestly really fine. If I hit it again, I'll probably stop on it because it's a 1 in 5 to hit uh, 30. Yeah. All right. Hey, how's it going? Maven fights. I didn't know the Maven hideout came from the fight, to be honest. I don't pay attention to hideouts at all. At least 100. I thought you just bought the Maven hideout, though. And I'm just going to use the rest of these to aim for above 20% quality. Oh, of course, this one hits for 30 on all the other stuff. 27, that's a good one. 21, not great. This just makes things easier for later. It's a very, very optional step, especially since if you corrupt a lot of items, it doesn't impact their value. Although with Eldritch Implicits, there's a little more of an argument to be made 
for not corrupting stuff. Oh, lightning. Man, if that was rolled a little better, that would be sellable just as is. That is so close. Yes, unblock. 242 energy shield. Yes, this stream will be saved to watch later. Okay, thank you for the clarification, Vento. So yeah, it's not something you get as a drop, it's something you buy. Which I know is very confusing. I kind of wish that GGG had better delineation between what things are bought in the shop and what things are earned through gameplay. Yep, I'm on the same build. I'm going to be on the same build until 319. I have no plans to change what I'm doing. All right, so I can ID that, ID that, regal that, just to get them all to something I can fossil. I've had a lot of issues with just holding shift. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Because, like, if I hold shift, doesn't work and then does. So, yeah, I'm just going to click. That's one of those things where the functionality technically exists in PoE. And then it works, but also doesn't work. Oh, cool. I'm selling... Which one is it? Left 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2... Oh, this one. The 4 blue, 2 green. Hmm. 29. Cool. That's a good one. 23, 24. I'll save those for rerolling later. The other interesting thing about doing this, you don't want to go too fast because you hit stuff like that, which I now have to decide. Oh, never mind. I thought it had an open prefix. If it had an open prefix, that would probably be worth selling as is. <laughs> uh... That's the crazy thing about using high tier bases. Oh yeah, this build is insane. I don't know that I would plan on playing it in 319 though. There's a more likely chance than not that it gets deleted. Oh man, look at those beautiful suffixes. So... I would not necessarily plan this for 319. Yeah, go too fast, roll over good stuff. Exactly. When you're using any sort of crafting currency that can have really good outcomes, going slow is really underrated, to be honest. Because there's been enough things so far that have made me stop that I would not want to be going fast here. Especially since I'm demonstrating. I always go slower when I'm demonstrating things to other people than when I'm crafting for myself. And you know the funny thing about that? When I'm crafting for myself, I do sometimes roll over good stuff by accident because I go too fast. When I'm demonstrating on stream, I never do. So that is a lesson to everyone, hopefully. <laughs> of don't do what I do and don't go too fast. Like, slow down. It's absolutely worth it. Okay, I don't need that one. Absolutely worth it. Fifteen, too low. Twenty-one, that's low, but I'll keep it for now because I'm almost out of these fossils. I really don't think this is a necessary step in crafting in the modern era. I think you can get away with not doing it and then just hillocking the good ones later. But I kind of like doing it this way, so I don't have to worry about buying hillock benches. Again, that, that could just be me. Oh. So there's a secret... 
for spamming jewelers that I always use. The secret is, if I want to link something, go here. I just click this button. I don't click jewelers and I don't click fuses. I just go here. <laughs> The odds are not different enough that it's worth it to me to risk spending the extra time and the extra clicks. 19. A surprisingly decent item. If you're a... See, the problem here is accuracy implies int stacker and chaos res implies low life build. So while those are really good suffixes, those are suffixes that don't have good synergy. And just like how mechanics in your build combine to form synergy mods on your items also have synergy and the more synergy between the mods the better yeah orbs of binding also work if you're using them on bases i was thinking more of finished items like if i was six linking this i'm not going to use an orb of binding or something like this I'm not going to use an orb of binding on it, but I will still just link it with a bench. All right. This is going to be the end of the fossils. How much did I spend on these fossils? This is the nice thing about writing everything down. Oh, there's a 28. So I've got 23, 24, 24. I think I can do a little bit better on this one. 25. Cool. All right, good enough. That was around two and a half X in fossils. So now I have all my bases to start off with. Let's go back to prepping the chest. So we've got it to 28% quality. Next up, I want to turn this chest into two chests. Let's see if I have to or i have the beast for it i do not i need the split beast here so i don't have the split beast that is a thenumal plagued arachnid and it's going to cost me no, well, not that person, apparently. Here's what I hate about buying beasts. If you just want one, they'll say minimum trade of 10. I don't need 10. They are the only listing that shows up on the trade site, so I have to ignore their account and then refresh the page. It's like, guys, if you want to do business and you want people to actually not ignore list you constantly, don't do stuff like that. Okay, let's try this one. I'm just gonna go down the list. Oh, this one has a million of them too. So if they don't answer, they're getting ignore listed. Cool, they answered. <laughs> uh. hmm. There we go. All bought. And now I go back to my menagerie, and now I split the item. Yeah, except I like to see when people are listing stuff normally. And I I don't like switching around my trade site settings just for beasts. There we go.
Oh, that's the thing. I have the currency. Like, that was 52C, so that's about 3 to an X. I could buy hundreds of them. That's not the issue. The issue is I don't need hundreds of them. I have the currency. Currency is not the issue here. Desire to purchase is the issue. And so now I've got two item level 100 chess pieces. Hmm. Alrighty. So next up, we're going to craft on some bases. What you want to use to craft and how you want to go about it will vary just a bit depending on the item. We are crafting energy shield gear, and I'm about to get into some different crafting methods. So to start off with, I'm going to craft some gloves. The gloves might end up like this. Ideally, they end up better than this because this does have Indomitable, which is T2 on it. This kind of thing is not that hard to make. Oh, the thing about crafting versus the buying price is if you craft, you make money, and if you buy, you lose money. So what I end up doing is I just craft, and then I get things like this, which was very cheap because I crafted it myself. Or this, which I made exalts from. It was negative cost to make this item. Oof, Vertex. Yeah, that's why... If someone tries to swap scam me, I always report them to TFT. And then that way I just never see them again because they get blacklisted. And because I already have it... set up, I just record with OBS, send a video. So, what are you asking, Chaotic? Sorry, chat's going a little bit fast. And let's take out 100 dense fossils and 100 resonators. The first and simplest crafting method, if you want something like ES gloves, is, as you might have guessed, just using fossils on things. Uh, do you mean brittle ground when moving? If you mean brittle ground when moving, yes, it does come from Eldritch Implicits. All right. Well, T1, T1. This item is not perfect. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a hybrid role, but it does have the defense suffix. This is very important, and I'm going to put this item aside for later. Because what you can do with this is non-defense to defense, and it will always put a hybrid mod in place on the item. That's actually how I made these as well. In theory, I would use a crafted ES shield over Aegis. But only if that crafted shield was mirror tier. <clears throat> and... I don't know what you mean by four different kinds. Any wishes for next league? New skills. <laughs> I really want some new skills. Oh, this is an unfortunate one. You can't use non-defense to defense to fix the fact that there's an open prefix, but having the T1 int really nice, not worth crafting more. I mean, maybe you could Eldritch influence and slam it, maybe, but overall, not worth it. T2 Dex. Oh, T2 Dex is nice. ES is a little bit low, but it's got attack speed. That's an interesting one. I'm not sure if it'll sell or not. Since I have a lot of bases, I'm going to put it aside. If I only had one base, this would be a price check and seller rollover kind of situation. But I mean, since I've got a bunch of others... Yeah, that's why I'm tempted to keep them. Uh, I wouldn't quite say godly. They would be godly if that energy shield recharge rate was not on it. But 
aside of that energy shield recharge, they are godly. Well, if you only have 1.5k health, you need to get more health. I hope the bosses get harder. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it as is for now. I might annul it later. Because the other thing is, you could potentially do non-type to type, such as non-attack to attack. I don't know what's worth yet. Uh, you can buy a portal gem and cast it on death. I have a portal gem right here. It's even level 2 with 50% quality. I just don't use it on cast on death because I rarely die on this build. I hard cast it. 217. A little bit unfortunate that it's T3. What do you mean you're too poor? This is one chaos. <laughs> what do you mean too poor? You are not too poor to afford a portal gem. Portal gems are literally one chaos last I checked. I don't think 217 is good enough for me. Objectively, it probably is good enough, but no thanks. I'm greedy. <laughs> okay. Jun 2. I have a video on how to profit off of essence farming. Go watch it right now. <clears throat> you will make more money in five maps essence farming in tier one maps than you have made in your entire PoE career. Also, don't save X for standard. They're worthless on standard. Hey, welcome, Quantum. So I just hit this, which is T1, T1, T3. This is a good one to keep, and I will fix the suffixes later. <laughs> what do you mean here, EXP? You can use the money to make a much better character, which will get you much faster EXP. No, consider your EXP a fair trade for currency. What well, if you have 200x, use them. Stop torturing yourself. Oh my god. No, use your exalts. Stop hurting yourself. And thank you very much, Quantum. Welcome to the channel. Right now, I'm looking for high ES here. High int is also quite good. And to answer a question from chat, casting Crit Forbidden Right is difficult. Yes, it is a very difficult build to make. Will I be posting a full build guide with all the crafting steps? I will not be posting a full build guide. I will be posting the crafting steps for the items that I am wearing. But as a huge disclaimer to that, you probably won't be able to reproduce the exact items I'm wearing. So you will need to adapt to those crafting methods to fit the gear that you end up having. Unless your budget is, I'd say, 600 or so exalts, you won't be doing the exact things that I'm doing. You'll be doing the same concept on a different base. Oh, no, Philip, Ward Loop is same difficulty as Cast on Crit Forbidden Right, if you're talking min-max. And which Elder's Currency? You should look on PewDB or Craft of Exile for questions like that, because honestly, I don't remember if it is the Exarch or the Eater. It's one of the two, and I always just check on PewDB or Craft of Exile. Very casual due to a day job and two kids. You can still enjoy Pewy? That's great. And by the time you reach tier 16 maps and above, the league ends. So... The best thing to do there, first off, go into the league with a plan. Say, all right, here's my league start build. And this league start build is what I'm going to use to get to, let's just say, red maps. Ideally, find a guide or find someone who can lay everything out in detail. So once you have that plan and you have that goal... Make sure you have a long-term goal. These are the things, uh, literally write yourself a checklist if lists help. These are the things I need to do. I need to get, let's just say an Aegis Aurora. Might be too expensive, but I'm just picking an item out of the hat. I need to get an Aegis Aurora before tier 16 maps. I need to get 
75% chaos res before tier 16 maps. I can have chaos res on my helmet, gloves, boots, and chest, but I'm using a unique ring, so I can't have chaos res on my ring. The more planning you do before the next league, the better your league start will go, and the easier it will be to check those things off as goals during your playtime. Uh, Andreas, there is an Essence video from five months ago. There's also a recent one that's updated for 318 with the Atlas Passive Trees. A progression guide on how to go fast on maps. See, I, I've heard a lot of people say that, and before I would have agreed. Now I think going fast in terms of map progression comes down more to your build than it does to how you're actually progressing in maps. If your build can easily and quickly handle the content, you'll be able to go through and have no issues progressing all the way to tier 16. But if you're dying, if you're struggling, if your map's taking 20 minutes because you just can't kill things quickly, then it's going to slow you down. Also, Lord Anubis, that is a great point. Use your Kirak missions. They are a great way to boost progress as you're progressing. So 2.12 and T2. Yes, that is also a very good point, Juntu. Don't be afraid to go back and farm. Yes, I would suggest it, Ben. I wouldn't necessarily suggest these numbers. It really depends on what amount of currency that you have. For me, I'm unwilling to trade for less than 40c per transaction. I would go as low as 10c per transaction or as high as like 70, 80. Experiment a little bit. The lower the price, the more trades you will get, but the less value per trade. So it comes down to how much do you value your time? If you're only able to make, let's say 3x an hour, Going down to 10 chaos is a good idea. If you're making 10x an hour, probably more like half an X should be your minimum trade. So more like the 79C. Also, this reminds me of something that helps for anyone who has limited playtime. Use a tab setup like this. Use a tab setup like this because then you don't need to spend time price checking most items. I don't need to know what an item is worth because all I need to know is, is it worth 2.4 X or less? If so, it goes in this tab and that's it. Then I don't have to think about it anymore. And it just goes through the tabs. These tabs are all currently full. So when I need to put more items in here, I just vendor everything in this tab. I lower the prices and I restart the setup. Can you use recombinators to make influence gear? Yes but it can only transfer influenced mods to an influenced base. So be aware of that caveat. It does have to have matching influence on the base to transfer the influenced mod. See, 171 with accuracy. Certain CI wonders can use this, but it doesn't have intelligence, so I don't think it's worth holding on to. Right now, I'm just looking for high ES. I mean... That's high ES. In fact, that's higher than my current gloves. I might just use these. Almost perfectly divine too. Damn, those are nice. Sometimes if it has good suffixes, even if it doesn't have super high ES, on gloves in particular, there's a lot of value in suffixes. Look for dexterity, accuracy, and attack speed. And if it has attack speed, pairing it with dex, int, or resist is good. If it has accuracy, you definitely want to pair it with int because that is an int stack wonder item. Yes, correct, Masood. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Feel free to correct me on that. I'm not very good at pronouncing names. So here's the thing about the gear that MP is crafting. The gear that MP is crafting is somewhat like the gear that I'm wearing on this character. Where if you want the best of the best, that can often be the right way to go. Like this is pretty darn close to the best of the best. This is the best of the best. But 
This isn't going to be right for everyone. Oh, that is a great strategy, Philip. That is a great strategy. But yeah, this isn't going to be right for everyone. Sometimes you just need good enough. And methods like this are really good at making good enough items. This pair of gloves, probably a good enough. At least to price check later. Uh, Philip, you've reminded me of a funny story. I made so much money in Legion just bench crafting. So much money. So it used to be that the minus mana cost of skills, everyone wanted it. Because in Legion, everyone was playing Cyclone. And what I did is I'd buy a good ring. We'll pretend this is a good ring, that it has life on it, and all those other fun stats that you want on a Cyclone build. And I'd buy a ring like that for 5 to 20 C. And then I'd go over here, and I'd just craft minus mana cost. And then I'd put it in a 1x tab. Or I'd buy a good ring for about an X, and I'd spend 1x for tier 1 minus mana cost. And I'd put it in a tab for 10x. And I made enough money to buy a headhunter, which was 1.2 mirrors. Enough money to buy a mirror, and over 100 exalts left over. Mirrors were about 100 exalts at a time. So I made over 300 exalts just doing that in about a week. It was absurd and the most disgusting money I've ever made. Low budget, map clearing, seismic trap, or skelly mage. I would go skelly mage. Seismic trap is not going to feel particularly good while mapping. Seismic trap's big weakness is its mapping and its clear speed. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's hybrid, not flat. I don't think that's worth fixing. Yeah, boots with life or ES bases missing res or a mod. That's a very good way to do it. Just crafting simple stuff, especially simple stuff that lots of people want, is a great way to make money early on. These days, my favorite method is usually to do it with cluster jewels, because usually I need a cluster jewel for my build. And so I just roll a bunch of them. And especially medium clusters, if you're rolling them with harvest, you're getting harvest in your map anyway. Super easy, super profitable. If this was T1, I'd consider doing non-defense to defense on it. With it being T2, I don't think it's worth it because last I checked, non-defense to defense was about two exalts. So I'm going to go through here and keep going. What clusters for poisonous concoction? Um, Are you talking larges or mediums? So far, you've missed... A lot of glove spamming. The best of which is this. Oh. So remember how I said, if you want accuracy, you probably want intelligence? This is exactly the sort of thing where I would craft intelligence and sell it to an int stack wander. It's not the best of the best, but it's a good item. And it's an item that is useful to someone. So that's easily a success. If I was feeling really ballsy or just wanted to gamble, I would try to slam the intelligence on with Eldritch Currency. I do not advise doing that. It is a very bad idea. It is very likely to fail. But you could. And whenever you're crafting stuff like this, don't go too fast. Uh, no. I do not care about binding orbs on any of this stuff because the value of linking it is so minimal that it is not worth the click. Something like this, when finished, is going to be selling for multiple exalts. If you're buying a multiple exalt item, you do not care if it is linked or not. How does the Elder's Currency work? You click an item and it puts a random implicit on it. You keep clicking until you get what you want. I don't think... So for this item specifically, I don't think its prefixes can't be changed Veiled Chaos. I think this item would be where the prefixes can't be changed Veiled Chaos would come in. 
or more likely this item right here. Because this item has excellent prefixes and junk suffixes. The other reason why poor linking doesn't necessarily matter is let's say they want to use it like I have for these boots, where it's green, green, red, blue. They're going to break the links anyway to do that. And if you're paying, you know, four, five, ten X for your gloves, you don't care about the cost to recolor and resocket it. Using an orb of binding to four link would be very good if I was making a low value item. If I was like, yeah, I want to sell these for 20 chaos each. Absolutely. A 20C item, you're going to look for a four link over an unlinked one. A lot of the bases for these were 20C. I'm looking for multiple exalts per trade. Speaking of, this is a pretty decent one. Unfortunately, it's T3, so the ES isn't perfect, but it has dex and I can craft attack speed and cast in Forbidden Right is popular and needs dex. And I believe 34 is just enough for the build. Sure, it's just that linking it doesn't really add anything. There's no value proposition there. Eighty-six, not good enough. One forty. Ah, uh, it has attack speed. Hey, thank you. Glad you are enjoying the content. One thirty-one, a little too low. One eighty-seven. One eighty-seven is right on the cusp, and these suffixes are also right on the cusp. We've got dex, attack speed, perfect for cast on crit, forbidden right. The numbers are just a little too low. Just a little teeny bit too low, unfortunately. Accuracy is a little bit too low. This is tactical chaos spamming, but very likely to result in energy shield stuff. CI for a Spectre Skeleton build. Mm. Depends on your budget. I'm not sure I'd recommend a Spectre Skeleton build to begin with. I'd focus on Skeleton Mages. No, this build will not work with Castwell Channeling. Castwell Channeling is not going to work with anything, actually, in terms of damage skills. You give up links, and you get a damage penalty. And the trigger rate is abysmal. Yeah, I think going CI Skeleton Mages will work at higher investment. It will be more expensive than just a regular old Skeleton Mage build. I really wouldn't combine that with a Spectre build. I'd use support specters. I mean, a CI specter build without skeletons could work, but it's going to be a lot weaker than other minion alternatives. So if you're on a budget, I wouldn't advise it. That is a, I have money to burn, and I can afford to do something less optimal. Is this worth keeping? Mm, I don't think so. Not quite good enough. I really don't mind the camp. I don't mind the camp at all. Ooh. We got T2 attack speed. ES is only okay, but that's worth putting aside. Best way to farm Eldritch Currency is to use Wrath of the Cosmos and click as many altars as you can. So Wrath of the Cosmos and then either Word of the Exarch or Rampant Growth. You cannot use Crystallized Omniscience with Righteous Fire. Only hits can penetrate resistances, and Righteous Fire does not hit. 
Castle Wall Channeling is not good at all. It's complete garbage. Number one, it has a damage penalty. Number two, it requires extra links just like cast on crit. Number three, you get less triggers per second than you would just hard casting the ability or hand casting the ability. It is impressively garbage and probably needs a complete rework before it will ever be viable again. Minus for support skills. If you're doing something with cast while channeling that doesn't need to do damage, that's fine. Oh, good question, Amelia. I craft stuff for my first build that I want to bring into endgame. I will also mix in playing the game. For example, I might run maps with essences, then use the, let's just say essences of greed to craft myself a good chess piece with life. But while I'm crafting that good chess piece with life, I'm selling all the essences that I don't need to buy other things for my build. Oh, 224, attack speed, open suffix. Yeah, I'd say that's worth it. Uh, would I recommend delving for a whole league? Not really. I think early on, delving's pretty profitable. Overall, the profits of really min-maxing and going hard on delve have kind of fallen off. All right, so I've done a bunch of fossil spamming, but there's other methods of crafting too. For example, I just mentioned essences. Hey, welcome. So let's grab some deafening essence of woe. So there's no way to do that, Nick. You can't use a casual channeling setup to do as many hits as possible. Here's the problem with that. Casual channeling, you will get one trigger every, I'd like to say it's 0.32 seconds. So three triggers per second. You are hard limited on that by the level of the gem. You will not be able to get more. You cannot scale that by increased cooldown recovery rate. There's no way to scale it. You can't even scale it via action speed. So three triggers per second. With Awakened Cast on Crit Strike, you can get 10 triggers per second. If your goal is to get as many hits as possible, you must use Cast on Crit Strike or you must cast a skill with something like Awakened Spell Echo and more cast speed gloves so that it has incredibly high cast speed. So cast while channeling won't help incinerate. Incinerate is a channeling skill that deals damage as you channel it. What that will do is trigger something else while you're channeling the incinerate at the cost of crippling the functionality of the incinerate itself. So you can use Essence of Woe to put Energy Shield on an item. The reason that I'm doing Energy Shield Essences is I don't want to necessarily fully clutter the suffixes. I want to be able to roll life and I want to be able to roll movement speed. This is a perfect example of why, except for the fact that the life on it sucks. But this is overall a pretty interesting item since there's a good number of hybrid ES life builds that would benefit from something like this. With essences, do you want to keep all of them upgraded? I do because it's easier to sell them in TFT in bulk when they're upgraded. It's not always optimal. That's kind of a early league thing. You want to usually stick to shrieking. Late league, you want to go up to deafening. So 5x a piece or get the crafting going. I would get the crafting going. I think it is a great time to learn how to craft. Is this a good idea? Should I annul it? Hmm. There's an open suffix. We can do better than annulling it. So these are decent boots. They're not perfect though, and they're not that hard to make. Movement speed is pretty common. So, oh, I don't have, all right. I need a ferric links alpha. 
Is farming Alva a good way to get currency? Yes. So I need to buy some beasts that will let me turn prefixes into suffixes. Let's see if this person will sell me five of them. Oh, look, the bots are starting. Cool. I really wish YouTube would get its bots under control. You get currency from Alva by selling the temples that you make or by using the temples in a profitable manner. It's hard to say what is exactly profitable for the temples. I guess an example would be double corrupting Aegis. Another example would be to use something like double corrupting a gem that is very much... Uh, so double corrupting a gem that is very much in demand. Another way to do it, though, just sell the temples because temples tend to sell pretty well when they have things like the Apex of Ascension, which you can use to upgrade items to sell. Or you can use something like, do I have a good one? Yeah, Locus of Corruption and sell that. Uh, my Discord does have a chat. Did you give yourself the community member role by reacting, Juntu? The best tier three rooms are Locus of Corruption, the Doryanis Institute, and the... I think it's... Where is it here? Apex of Ascension, I think? Sometimes I do not remember the exact names by tier. Yeah, Apex of Ascension. Those three will typically sell the best. So now, Apex is the upgrade a unique. So now we can do prefix the suffix. Wait, no. Add a suffix, remove a prefix. There we go. Yeah, you should be able to click the book and it will add the community role to you. So let's see if this becomes anything good. It is a 33% chance of a 66 to brick. And it bricked. So back to using the essences. I'm just going to stay here. No movement speed, no good ES, but good life. I was trying to remove the low tier life roll there. Hybrid, not that good. 20% move speed. Not that good. I'm looking for good movement speed, good life, good ES, that sort of stuff. Like, this is getting closer. This is way closer to what I want. Just, you know, more. These you have to go really slow because it's very easy to roll over something good. And while you will get better ES doing it a different way, you won't necessarily get better overall results. So, I will try to sort that out for you later, Juntu, after I finish streaming. Just let me know what your Discord name is. When do you Beastcraft versus when do you Null? You Beastcraft when you can add something of value by removing a modifier from one affix and adding it to another. So, in the case of a Boots, I had three prefixes and I had two suffixes. I could add a third suffix, which adds value, and I could clear up a prefix, which I could use for crafting ES. Uh, tier 1 movement speed is not actually very rare. 
you just need it to be item level 86, which is in and of itself rare. A regex won't really give me a better search here because there's way too many. All right, I will sort things out for you after the stream then. And, you know, actually, let's do it right now. Let's see here. Let me find you on the list. Yes, it needs to be item level 86. See, this is the part where I'm not great at Discord stuff either, so I have to actually figure out how to do it. Which I'm not good at. So I'm trying to search for his name and it's not coming up. Oh. All right, I will sort that out later then because I'm getting very sidetracked. And I'm not great at Discord stuff either. This is an interesting one because it might be worth using non-speed to speed. I don't know. I don't know the odds of getting something good off of non-speed to speed or the cost. So I'm just going to put that aside for now. For something like this, the vendor recipe would not be worth it, no. Because the goal is to combine it with energy shield as well. Hmm. This isn't quite good enough. Item level 86 items are usually found in content like Coward's Trial or Uber Cortex, where the base area level is above that of a tier 16 map. Oh, double T1 suffixes. Ooh, open prefix with really good ES. That's worth putting aside. Non-speed to speed 2.5x. Probably not worth using on the boots then. Might be worth crafting a prefix though. Or Ashling. I don't know what Ashling's worth. That's another question. Yeah, you can also get them in Abyss. Anything with a base area level is above that of a tier 16 map, which is level 83. Oh. So... Left five, top ten. Let's see which one this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I probably did myself no favors by putting all of the one exalt skin of a loyal in the same tab. Not the best move on my part. Even with the T1 in here, prefixes are kind of meh. So, not the best. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of open prefixes. No, I do not like using overlays at all. I find every one that I've tried to be incredibly obnoxious. And honestly, offensively bad. How would I change recombinators for future leagues? I would not allow you to transfer fractured mods from other items. So let's just say you have, which one of these is fractured instead of synthesized? Yeah, something like this. You would not be able to make an item like this anymore because the fractured mod should be considered part of a base. You can put other mods onto the Fracture. You can't move a Fracture to something else. This would mostly be to prevent top-end abuse cases without affecting the items for most players. The next thing I do is, if you use a Recombinator and part of the Recombination fuel is either corrupted or mirrored, 
the end result is always corrupted or mirrored. This would eliminate the other really big abuse case of people making super mirror bases by mirroring things and recombinating the mirrored pieces. So now you would be able to make a super item from that, but you would not be able to mirror the super item that you create. It would always be mirrored as the end result. And from there, I would probably tweak the odds of success just very, very slightly to make it harder to recombinate multiple mods together and easier to recombinate single mods together by, let's just say, 10%. So if you want to make a pretty good item where you're transferring two single mods to the same base, relatively easy. If you want to transfer, say, four mods to the same base, harder than it is now. And after that, I think it would be pretty healthy and pretty balanced. So that's an example of using essences. Now I'm going to go back to using some fossils just to show the difference here. How do you target attack speed on gloves? If you wanted T1 attack speed specifically, you would do probably... Prefixes can't be changed, reforge speed. I'm pretty sure it's the only speed mod. You'd get your prefixes good first, and then you'd target it that way. Uh, a fun boss killer you can try out for 20 exalts. I'm going to be honest. I don't think most boss killers are very fun. And I especially don't think a low investment boss killer is very fun. Most of them tend to be dodge or die and don't teach you the boss fights very well. So instead, what I would do on 20 Exalts is make a build that is good for all content. So something like a Righteous Fire Inquisitor that will feel good while bossing, but also be good while mapping. And so doing it this way with the fossils, I'm getting much more consistent energy shield rolls, but I'm much less likely to roll movement speed. And this is the trade-off that you have to make when crafting. If your build is some sort of flicker strike build, you definitely want to roll it with fossils. If your build needs to be walking around and you want that sweet, sweet movement speed on boots, this is not going to be the best way to do it. Although, I say that, and then I hit this. Which is... cool? I don't know if it's good or not. That's going to go over here in the... We'll find out in a little bit. One eighty ES is pretty good. Unfortunately, the prefixes are all full. One thing you can do, I don't suggest this, but if you did really want the movement speed, you can do it like this, where you're using a shuddering fossil and combining it with a dense fossil. You get a lot of rolls like that. The most economical, though, from my experience, is to use Essence of Woe on these and aim for either really good prefixes or good suffixes and move speed. Now, I don't think it's quite that good because the Chaos Res is really low tier, unfortunately. I, I don't think it's quite 1x. I do think it's sellable, and it might be worth price checking later, though. This does lower your odds of rolling movement speed versus just Chaos spamming. And funnily enough, ooh... Speaking of builds that don't need to walk places, like, this is what a build that doesn't need to walk places is going to use. It's going to use 269 ES boots. Because there is, interestingly enough, boots are one of those weird items in Path of Exile where you could actually make an argument for just chaos spamming them. And if these brick I'm going to try to beastcraft these to open up a prefix. If these brick 
I might show a little bit of chaos spamming on boots. The first ones are watching survivors. Don't disappoint them. The ritual hmm. is complete. And it kept the movement speed. It added life regen, which is unfortunately a dead mod, but it did not break. And so now these are 30% move speed boots with solid base ES that can be divined a little higher. And you can come over here and you can craft. I mean, you could use any of these as long as they have energy shield in them. But people tend to be weird and find them funny looking. And get something like this. Maybe a little higher. 194. Uh, I'd have to define it. That's unfortunate. I didn't read. I thought that that was the max on the essence roll. Well, I wasted a little money there. I should have just crafted one and called it good. And if you wanted to finish with suffixes, yep, like Tony's saying, you can reforge keeping prefixes from here. So this is a very good finished item. For something like this, I don't really think this one's worth anything. So I'm going to use this as an example of what happens when you chaos spam boots. And for this, I'm just going to have it light up to move speed just to show how common move speed is. Obviously, you don't always want move speed. Oh, I mean, that's really close. Everything's full, though, and it's got a bad mod, so let's try to annul. We want to get rid of a plus 8 to 11, or plus 6 to 11 maximum ES. And we killed one of the good mods. The item is now dead. Back to Chaos Spam. I'm just reading the number at the top here and looking for it to light up. Thirty-five percent move speed. It's a shame that the other prefixes are complete garbage, though, because those suffixes are honestly very solid. This is something where early league, if you were chaos spamming these boots and you hit that, that is very good money. Late league, probably more of a curiosity, to be honest. And I think I'm just going to put all the boots back and move on to something else. Because this is a little bit less about how to make the best ES gear and a little bit more about what happens when you do various things with various types of ES gear for the purposes of education. So we're going to go back to fossils here for helmets. Helmets are interesting because on the one hand, they're usually not worth that much without enchantments. But on the other hand, if you get something good, you can put an enchantment on it very easily. The potential problem being that a lot of people who are buying good helmets ultimately want an amazing helmet with influence mods and elevated mods and all that, which you can't hit unless you're fossil spamming an influence base. Well, this is the video. This is going to be up on my channel pretty much forever. So... Right now, I'm looking for what my baseline should be of how much ES to keep an eye out for. I'm doing that by looking at the tiers of the mods and the number. So this is 267, which if you're comparing to gloves, 267 ES on a pair of gloves or even a pair of boots, amazing. But on a helmet, you'll notice it's T2, T5, T5. Which isn't actually that great. So I know that 267 ES is probably not a spectacular outcome. Even 281 here isn't necessarily spectacular. And this is helping me to establish a baseline of what I'll be looking for on future roles. Now, if something has a really rare mod or good suffixes, it could still be sellable. But I'm not going to go out of my way to necessarily target or finish items like this. I probably need it to be at least 300 ES or have something that stands out about it. Like here, we're much closer. 
it's missing a prefix. You could do suffix to prefix on this. Hope you take the accuracy and turn it into an ES or a life mod. Because actually, turning this into a life mod and selling it to a hybrid build could be well worth it. Especially since the beasts are not that expensive. And I know I could craft a mod. I don't think it's worth just crafting and selling as is. I think you really need to hit something useful. And I didn't hit anything useful. So it's garbage. 306. That's more like it. We've got T4, unfortunately, on the flat. But it's better, at least. With good suffixes, might be sellable. Without good suffixes, probably not. Now, remember how I said sometimes an item's suffixes make up the value? T1 Chaos Res, T3 Int. Pretty rare combo. So this I'm actually going to keep, especially since it already has the Purity of Fire enchant, though I don't remember if this is a good one. This is just something the base happened to have. This is the sort of item that you put aside and deal with later. Level 3 of Socketed Minion Gems would also be an interesting one. Oh, this one can't roll it. I probably should have bought all 86 plus. That was a slight mistake. But people weren't answering to sell me helmets, probably because there isn't a huge market for this. In general, if you're just looking to craft things for profit and to sell, boots will sell well, gloves will sell very well, helmets will not sell well. Here we go, 328 int. Suffixes are garbage, but I can always fix those later. 211, not high enough. 334, with Chaos Res. Chaos Res is coming up a surprising amount. Probably worth keeping. And now that I've set my baseline, now that I know I want 300 plus, it's a lot easier to take a look at the items at a glance and assess them. Yeah, I remember when people used to way overpay on leather belts. Yeah, because there's so many unique alternatives and there's so many alternatives like influence mods or blizzard crowns where you don't necessarily get the most ES or even crown of the inward eye. Crown of the inward eye, like a 5C item that for its cost is absolutely amazing. Which means you have to beat crown of the inward eye or be using one of the very few builds that can't really benefit from Crown that isn't using another unique, which I can't think of any non-minion builds off the top of my head. And a lot of minion builds use their helmet for damage, which puts you back into the spot of probably not wanting a high ES hubris circlet. Yeah, when I made the first version of this build, the Cast on Crit Forbidden Riot, I paid 20C for my Aegis. 20 Chaos, and it was a near-perfect one. They've gone up quite a lot in price. Crown of the Inward Eye is still cheap, though. 227, not good enough. 293, this could be if divined. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's definitely worth doing suffix to prefix on. I don't think 40x will get it running okay. I think you need... Ooh. I'll answer that in just a minute. I hit a very good helmet finally. This is the sort of thing where you want to finish the item and definitely sell it. So I think you need probably closer to 100x to really get it up and running at this point, unless you are very familiar with how to craft stuff. Oh, uh, I don't have any more wolf alphas. This is the problem with doing beast crafting. I run out of stuff.
I forgot how many beasts I'd need. There's a couple ways to do it. You could just slam it with influence. You could also do some sort of Veiled Chaos stuff or Ashling. What I would do is I would look at what are the builds that are currently using a helmet like that. And of those builds, what are people buying? And I'd probably pay someone to put an enchantment on it after I finish it. So I'd take that into account. Then I'd either influence slam, maybe harvest reforge, something to finish the suffixes so that they're in a good state. Or of course, maybe I find out that no specific build is going to pay a ton for it. And I just craft a suffix and call it good. That is also just a perfectly valid thing to do. So let's see what we get here. We can't really destroy any value by getting rid of a suffix as both are garbage. The first ones are watching survivors. Don't Wait, is that a new bot pretending to be a person? If you're a person, don't spam, but I expect you're a bot. <laughs> Oh. And it hit mana. It's happened twice now. Hmm. To properly learn to craft, you do need to know about a bunch of builds or be willing to do the research. Mm, I don't think it's a cat on the keyboard. Not when there's a bunch of dots and that message is suspiciously similar twice. Uh, as far as I can tell on my end, the stream is fine. But if it's acting up for anyone else in chat, do let me know. But at the very least, everything on my end, OBS is green, and YouTube says the stream is fully healthy. So, if something is going on... Okay. See, that's a problem with streaming. Sometimes I can't tell if it's me. <laughs> uh, Alright, so, for most people it's fine, for a few people it's not. Unfortunately, that probably means it's something on YouTube's end. Uh, hopefully it resolves itself promptly. I'm going to use just a few more here. That's almost good. But yeah, part of a reason that I'm doing as much with teaching here as I can is because I know a lot about a lot of different builds and I'm trying to share that knowledge. The reason that I'm using the suffix to prefix, even at 20C here, if this hits a good life roll, it is worth quite a bit. And oh look, a bot. If anyone from YouTube is listening, please let me ban account names instead of just words in chat because I can't ban emotes. I've tried and it just doesn't work. And yet again, we've hit mana. That is three for three on mana, by the way, for anyone keeping track at home. Yes, it is worth jumping in now. The thing about PoE is late league, you'll be able to jump in really easily because a lot of the stuff that was expensive is now dirt cheap. So as long as you pick a proper League Start appropriate build, you'll find your gear to be very, very inexpensive. Whereas if you go to standard, items that in League are, you know, 5-6-C, more like 5-6-X. Because the odds of ruining the item at that point are just too high, I'd rather just roll over it and keep going. That... The item had a 50% chance to brick, and at that point, it wasn't really worth it to me to spend the extra annuls. I could have, but 
I don't really think it's worth it. Oh, so close. If that had been higher ES, the intelligence and accuracy would have made a very good entry-level Int Stacker Helm that wasn't Crown of Eyes. I believe Int Stackers can use Crown of Eyes as a entry-level helmet, too. Two seventy. Oh, very close. Very close. If it had a slightly better suffix, might be worth messing with. Three eighteen. Could be defined a little higher. I think that's worth holding on to. And that's helmets for now. Let's go on to something else. So for something like a shaper shield, there's a lot of really interesting outcomes. You're not just looking at energy shield anymore. You're looking at energy shield, but then it could have plus one gems. It could have crit to spells. It could have spell damage. It could have typed damage. Or it could have ES recovery on block. Now, with just one of these things, it's not necessarily going to sell unless it is god tier ES. But this is your competition. Which means you probably want ES on block. Or you want something that this can't roll. Like plus one gems. Here we have an example, but the ES just isn't high enough. This is where I'm going to be spending a lot. Reduced reservation is generally not worth it, because in general, most people who use a reduced reservation shield will be using a shield with other mods, same for spell block. Now, if you hit that on top of other stuff, probably worth it but if it doesn't have high es es on block or something really good like tier one yes or sorry tier one spell damage tier one fire damage i don't see someone using it right now especially since you could make where is it something like this if you really want the reservation efficiency and it's a lot better for a build that doesn't need the es or the recovery on block, of course. Now, if it has those things combined, then we're talking. Although also, dense fossils are not the best for rolling reservation efficiency. See, this is an interesting one, because it's not the best ES, but it's not the worst, and it does have a reservation. And so... 270 ES with socketed gem reservation efficiency. Can it go higher? Hmm, a little bit. But I'm just going to cut it off at 270. Something like this is worth less than the cost of the base item scoured. So, not worth it. Time to roll over it. There is a way... I believe it has the mana tag. Can I see here? I can't see here. I'll have to check again. I would guess it has the mana tag, and if so, you can target it with Lucent Fossils. If it doesn't have the mana tag, then no. Unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to target it, and that would be uh, Harvest's fault. Oh, that's so close to really good. The suffixes are garbage, but those prefixes, and that's low rolled. That could probably go, I'm going to say close to 450. What's a 400 ES shield going for? Four hundred ES shield, about. Oh, this is this is troll. Because the first couple are bad items that won't really improve, and they're relatively cheap. One of them is actually super cheap to the point where I'm just gonna buy it. Because if I can get this for fifteen C, it's worth way more than fifteen C. And then they jump up to four X, 
So I'm going to guess this is worth a couple X. And I think that's worth holding on to. 14% chance to block. This is another nice mod, but it's nice only on top of other good things. It used to be really easy to make ES on block shields with non-defense to defense. It is much harder now because you need the energy shield recharge as a suffix on top of all three ES prefixes. And then you can do non-defense to defense. Which is still worth it in some cases. High spell damage. Well, not that high, but spell damage roll. And unfortunately, not good enough. If you're looking to get high fire damage or plus one to fire spell gems for a RF shield, maybe something like, do I have one here? Yeah, something like this. I actually suggest using recombinators on it. So if your build insta dies, the best thing you can do is try to find out what you're dying to. If you can figure out what you're dying to, you'll have a clear direction as to how to improve it. If you can't kill stuff, kind of the same idea. The better you understand how your build deals damage, the better you're able to address the problem. In both cases, I would say test specific affixes or test specific situations to find the failure points and really hone in on that. Like if you're dying to Cirrus, and you're not spell suppression capped, get spell suppression capped. If you're dying to random packs of monsters, then look at what the map mods are. If you're playing an old build that was godly, it's probably time to move on. If you're playing flame blast totems, yeah, it's definitely time to move on. Flask charge, medium cluster. Yeah, flask charge, medium cluster should be pretty good. Also, another good thing would be to get... Huh. Chaos damage over time or damage over time mediums. Ooh, that is a pretty good double corrupt. It's a very good double corrupt. Spell suppression cap is 100%. So I just got this shield, which you can then do this. Yeah, chaos large. And it is now a 405 ES shield. That was 15C. That was definitely underpriced. And that's going over here. I will sell that later. Remember to... Check the quality on your items. Check to see what an item will be if you quality it, if it is an ES base. Because this looked like a much less valuable item and was sold for rather cheap. Ooh, 3% max fire res with decent ES rolls. Oh, interesting. All right. Kind of a waste of a shaper base here. But I wonder if this is worth anything. It's worth about 2x. And there's not much of a market for them. So not really worth it. Smalls are good for health. Yep. So we roll over it, unfortunately. Since there's all the max res suffixes, you really have to pay very close attention when rolling shields. You can't just mindlessly spam. Uh, if a prefixes weren't garbage, is that worth reforge keeping stuff? Nah, not with a recharge. Never mind. If it had had another good suffix, that might have been a reforge keeping suffixes target. 
or a reforge keeping suffixes into suffixes can't be changed, reforge defense, defense more common. But it would have had to have something like the spell block here, which it did not. Two eighty one, not quite high enough. Four nineteen. There we go. Oh, perfect. Those are perfect prefixes. Well, that's definitely a keeper. For that, you probably want to do something like prefixes can't be changed, reforge defense, defense more common. That way you can get yes on block and you can also divine it. Make yourself a really good shield. I'm going to guess that it goes up to 450 yes. I think 450 is about right. And 450 ES with ES on block. There's one offline that is better because it has T1 int for 150X. Oh, it also has chance to deal double damage. Okay, that one's not really comparable. Let's try lowering it to 420. The cheapest is 25X. This one is easily on par with the 25X shield once you do reforge defense. Yes, I do. That is another build that was at one point good, is still playable, but isn't really god tier anymore. It got power crept on pretty hard by the changes. I'm sure it's still playable, but I'm also pretty sure it's not great. One fifty two, one sixty nine, not quite good enough. Though the max lightning res, pretty neat. Fire damage. Not that anyone goes CIRF and low life RF isn't very common, but if that was high tier, might have been worth it. Yeah, a lot of stuff. That's the thing about Path of Exile. Um. I think you're thinking of 316, Philip, because there were no changes from 317 to 318. But I think that build did die, and I think it died in 316 going to 317. Hmm. What skill needs reworking the most? Hmm. I think that the skills that are most in need of rework are either detonate dead or arguably corpse scaling in general. Lightning strike, since I don't think we're going to see a healthy melee meta without lightning strike getting a rework. Or what else? What else is really problematic right now? I think those two are the best. Or best examples, I should say. And you might note that I didn't pick weak skills for those examples. I picked strong skills. The reason I picked strong skills is very often the reason that weak skills don't get buffed is because strong skills are too oppressive. And GGG does not want to make more things that are game-breakingly powerful. So, Lightning Strike and Corpse Skills stand out to me as things that are brokenly powerful and need reworking so that the rest of the comparable skills can be brought into relative balance. I.e., if you rework Lightning Strike, you can then balance all the other Strike Skills since a lot of the other strike skills are relatively equal to each other. But right now, if you did something like strike skills do 10% increased damage per additional target based strike, that's a huge buff to lightning strike, which is a problem, even if it would be relatively balanced for all the others. 
This is an interesting one because it can have significantly more ES. Normally, I would check this in POB. I'm just going to check it in actual PoE to give an example. So 380. It's about 380 ES with ES on block. And that looks to be worth 6 to 10x. To answer the question of who would use this instead of Aegis, that's a good question. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, the answer is people who care about the ES number more so than the overall value of their items. There's a few cases where that's not true, such as if you absolutely can't build armor for whatever reason. Like, let's say you're doing some sort of ES-based word loop build. You might want a shield like this, because you can't have the armor on your shield. But I don't know that you can even do ES-based word loop. Oh, I think Aegis is a huge issue. It shouldn't have 5% max cold res and better scaling on its recovery on block than most other types of competition. Pick one or the other. The replenish ES on block is fine. The 5% max cold is fine. Both together, very bad. Oppressively bad. Hmm. Let's go with something like this for a second here. I'm mostly just going to use these up since I've already socketed them, and then I want to go on to crafting some of these. So I'm just looking for big number, again, to get myself a baseline. That was a pretty good big number for a first attempt. Yeah, especially after melding. Oh no, armor doesn't need a nerf. Armor is overall fine. It's things that synergize with armor that have a problem. Armor's in the healthiest spot it's ever been in PoE's history. Except then you have overpowered things like Molten Shell, which should have been nerfed like 3.8 and weren't for some reason, that are just completely skewing everything. So I've got some Crystal Belts here. I want to get a little bit clever with them, hopefully. I run Determination, Zealotry, Purity of Ice, Tempest Shield, Discipline, Defiance Banner, and Precision. And some of those are alt quality. So the idea here is I'm going to roll decent ES on it using Essence of Woe, and then I'm going to Crusader Slam it to try to hit percent ES. It isn't broken because the broken things aren't the aura itself. That just having 68,000 armor in and of itself is totally fine. That only mitigates physical hit damage. But then if I have Divine Shield, now it mitigates physical hit damage and all degen effects while I'm getting hit for physical damage. If I have Molten Shell, now it mitigates all hit damage most of the time. If I have Aegis, it now fuels my recovery. And because Aegis is very good, I also get max res, which feeds into my elemental defenses. The problem isn't armor itself. The problem is everything around the armor. And if you just nerf armor, all you do is force even more builds to just build more armor. Because all those overpowered synergies would still exist without changing at all. So I want an open prefix and good suffixes, which is not this item. You never had this much armor before because there wasn't a point to it. Because those synergies didn't exist. Of course you didn't. Why would you? Armor isn't broken, though. <laughs> You're wrong. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. The prefixes are pretty good. Oh, this is an interesting one. That's a really, really good base. 
Better evasion synergies would be wonderful. I would love better evasion synergies. Because otherwise, evasion is not going to be a viable defensive path. Nope. Evasion synergies are sorely, sorely lacking. So you can't do the same. Now, if they buffed them, then we might be talking. I maybe should have qualityed this now that I think about it. I definitely forgot to do that. So let's scour all these. Yep, that is exactly where defenses are at the moment. You have functionally immune to all damage in most situations. So the problem with nerfing armor Juntu is it doesn't fix the problem. It's just like how the glancing blow build was one of the dumbest nerfs that GGG has done. The problem with glancing blows was recovery on block. And you know what this did? This killed glancing blows for any build that wasn't using recovery on block. It was a worthless nerf. If you nerf armor, all you're going to see is, if you don't wear this item, your build's shit. You have terrible armor, you can't mitigate anything, and the strongest defenses in the game are still using armor. You just need twice as much now. Nerfing armor makes the rest of the game worse without fixing the problem. If you nerf the armor synergies, things like Divine Shield, things like recovery based on armor, then you actually address the problem. That's the thing. You could take 50% off the value of armor, have all the armor in the game, put it back to its old effectiveness. It would still be the best defense. It just now means that everyone who can't afford a mage blood has a worse build. And the top end players are laughing completely unaffected. I would be just as strong if you nerfed armor as if you left it alone. <laughs> yeah, you can just stand in things without moving. It's kind of hilarious, actually. Oh, that's another thing that would actually be nerfed. Right now, you're... Ooh, that's a pretty good one. I just need to annul it and not brick it. See? You hit 100% of the time. Oh no, you got frozen for seven minutes. <laughs> oh no. I'm glad you've been enjoying my take on RF. I also very much enjoyed that build. All right, talk to you later. Hmm. Almost out of essences. So what needs to be nerfed is all of the synergies funneling you into armor and also all of the synergies funneling you into melding. Wait, where is it? Here. I think that what melding should do is it should say elemental resistances are capped by your highest maximum elemental resistance instead. Your maximum resistance cannot exceed 85. I think you should be stuck at 85 max so that you get 85 all rather than 90 all. Uh, no, I'm good on essences. I can always craft these via other means. Let's uh, put these back because I don't really need those right now.
So now we're going to Crusader Slam these. If we hit percent yes, we win big. If we hit other stuff, it might still be sellable. If we don't hit anything good, we just roll over them. Crit chance against shocked enemies. Melee hits which stun have a 9% chance to fortify. All right, that one gets rerolled. That one's probably garbage. Unfortunately, <laughs> this one could already be sellable. Uh... I don't know that a multiplier works because the problem with a multiplier is it's a poor tax. If you're wearing a mage blood, you get access to so many resists that all a multiplier does is tax poor people rather than actually limit the top end power. You can go life on block instead. I don't think it's overall as strong as ES right now, though. Just because the bigger health pools that you can get with ES actually matter for the hits on uber bosses. So I'm looking for either good ES and other interesting mods or something like ES percent ES. So if melding was a multiplier, then all I do is I lose 14% movement speed on my flask and I have 90% all max still. That's the problem. Um, do I have a flask for that? I might have kept one. Maybe not. It might just be in some random tab, though. All right. I don't have one, unfortunately. Let's just use this as a quick example, because this is about 40% res. So right now I have 104, 102, 92, 147, 145, 135. So I could have 30%-ish less, and all that means is I need to wear a bismuth flask. With functionally no change, assuming I'm wearing a mage blood. I could have maybe 10, 15% less. And all I need is a flask suffix. Ah, uh, yes. If you don't mind, Packet, I would love to borrow that for just a minute. So just for the sake of demonstration, this is what happens if you have a mage blood and you put on res flasks. I now have 250% res. I gained 150% or roughly doubled my resists by putting on this flask. Which is why a less multiplier does not actually fix the problem. <laughs> and thank you for letting me demonstrate that. Yeah. All right, so energy shield recovery rate, not quite what I wanted. There we go. Yes, yes. Strength cold res. Oh, it's only 10 to 12. Yeah, and I... There are times where I'm okay with those sorts of taxes. If we're talking about uber bosses, I'm okay with taxing everyone who doesn't wear a mage blood. Because uber bosses are meant for the top players. It's to give people a challenge to aspire to, and it's to give the top players something to do with their giga OP builds. But in other aspects of the game, I am very much against taxing based on wealth. Because that makes the game feel worse as a whole. And I disagree about Mageblood being unhealthy for the game. I think Mageblood is great for the game. Because it is a top-end item. It's absurdly powerful. But it is that item for uber-bossing. It's not something you need to do tier 16 maps. It's 
not something you need to do Shaper, Elder, Maven. If the game became buffed to the point where you can't do tier 16s without a mage blood, that's when it's a problem. Yeah, the Eternal Struggle is a very inexpensive item that is quite good. I don't think it hits best in slot status. I think it loses to Ashes of a Stars or a Perfect Rare. But here's the thing. This, I mean, feel free to correct me, Blood Sausage, but this probably cost an Exalt. This costs like 50. A rare that competes with both of them will cost 150, even with recombinators. So if you're looking for a high power item, it is relatively common. Something like this is amazing. You split resonators one by one by holding shift. Like that. Oh, or 50C. <laughs> Never mind. That cost 50C, apparently. I stand corrected. And I'm very glad that items like that exist. Ooh. If only the suffixes didn't suck. Increased lightning damage, energy shield recovery rate. Fun fact, energy shield recovery rate will multiply with other sources of recovery. So sometimes you can get good stuff from this. Oh, that's so close. If a flat yes wasn't garbage, that would... E Exactly be what you want. I have not crafted these in a long time. I think the real answer might even be to recombinate good bases before you get to this step. Let's see. What do I think of this? Oh, that's an interesting bow. Spell damage and elemental damage. With elemental damage of attacks, plus one, plus two, and crafted mods. Oh, look. A bot. Goodbye, bot. I think that's really neat. I don't think it's quite best in slot. But it's really neat. The reason I say I don't think it's quite best in slot is if you're something like Explosive Arrow Ignite or let's just say Elemental Hit, because that works with Elemental Hit, too. You really want plus one proj or plus one supports. Ah, yeah, you're playing Unearth. Verides is an interesting item. I think it's strong, but I also think that the cost of using the rings is quite fair. Because, yeah, it's a nutty item. But rings can also get really nutty these days. Although, I guess... For something like my Maelstrom turn, you could make one of these with Verides. You'd just have to annul down to Crit Multi and then do Suffixes Can't Be Changed Scour to force it to a magic item and then craft the minus mana cost. I don't know if I should have rolled over that last one, actually. Oh, well, it's gone now. I'm trying to get high armor and high ES together. Because that is surprisingly relevant. Oh, look. High armor, high ES. And good suffixes. So, if you want to create a six link armor, the best thing to do is to go right here six link sockets. I know 1,500 fuses sounds like a lot. Save up for 1,500. Don't gamble on linking something yourself. You know, what? I'm just going to hold on to this. I'm not going to necessarily keep it, but there's no real harm in potentially keeping something like that. And uh, this didn't roll well. I have... I forget which map you get it from. That's something that you should easily be able to look up. So I have zero desire to ever play PoE on a console. And I don't even think PoE should be on console based on the market size, to be honest. 
It gets very poor support. It's a huge drain on GGG's resources. And overall, just doesn't feel worth it. But also, I've played Path of Exile on not the best hardware. And it just does not play well. Doesn't play well at all. And yes, I can craft the... Well, something like this, actually. And then Crusader slam it. In this case, I didn't craft the suffixes, but I got two really good prefixes. And now I can fill the suffixes and Crusader slam. So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put this back. So I'm, I'm done rolling belts for now. Now I'm going to do any suffix. Doesn't matter what it is. This is just to fill the mod slot. And now I take my... Oh, wait. Where did I put it? I put these back, didn't I? They are in here. Yes. Oh, those are definitely good enough to sell. I don't know how much they'll be worth. Something you could do alternatively is instead of rolling the essences prefix, because it's a spell suppression base, you could roll loathing for chance to avoid elemental ailments. I think it's loathing for that. Yes, it is. That would be a complete recraft. Would probably be higher value. As is, though, they're pretty good and should sell for a pretty penny. Right, and now we slam it and we hit lightning damage, which lightning damage plus wed. Sadly, not perfect for an int stack wander. Could absolutely be worth selling. Yeah, but no one plays it on console. <laughs> there are private leagues on PC that run more people than console and also item control and controller garbage i've tried the controller beta when you're killing monsters it's fine if you're trying to craft stuff absolutely unplayable trash and as far as i know it is not very easy to get a mouse and keyboard to run on your xbox still so i'm gonna be honest i still have zero plans to ever play poe on console because that just sounds like a miserable experience just like how i have zero desire to ever play games on a phone because that also sounds like a miserable experience and every time i've tried it it has been awful so this is a 100 percent volvigalia tier 16 base or why did i say tier 16 100 percent volvigalia six link base forget the tier 16 part I've crafted too many items and my brain is turning to mush. So I'm trying to make something really good. You can get over 700 ES at the top end. You can always fix suffixes later. There you go. There you go. T1, T1, T2. Well, that was easy. And see, I plan to use the rest of the fossils. <laughs> uh, they have approached me before, Chris. I've I've given them very big numbers that they said no to. Yeah, Diablo Immoral. Don't you have phones? I'm still waiting for Pewee Mobile to come out. And just absolutely destroy Diablo Immoral. And yes, it is immoral. Because the entire thing is set up to make you spend massive amounts of money and keep spending massive amounts of money. This one's also pretty good. I don't think it's quite good enough. Yeah, I just, I hope they deliver it soon. It would be the perfect time. How much ES is this? Again, normally I'd check this in POB or something. I'm going to check it here, though. So it's about 650 ES. 650 and T1 int. How much is that worth?
Looks like the cheapest one is five exalts. And mine is arguably a little bit better. See, I don't think I can roll over that in good conscience. Hey, TF Mullah. How's it going? And hey, Zacharias. What would I do with... Oh. Oh, that's really good. Uh, that's perfect for Cold Dot. If we're talking about what would I do in terms of playing a build? Cold Dot. If we're talking about what would I do in terms of selling? I would craft maybe non-damaging ailment effect, maybe cast speed, maybe a resist. I'd anoint it with something like Tranquility, and I'd sell it for all the money, because that thing is disgusting. I don't know if I can show that on YouTube. All right, let's roll another ES chest, since they're apparently very easy to roll. I mean... You say the chest is easy to roll, you hit a 650 ES chest with T3 int. It's just how it goes. Can divide it up to closer to 700. It's just how the tier crumbles. <laughs> maybe my standards are too low for these chests. Or maybe they're just that easy to roll. And this is a great money-making secret that's absolutely going to get obliterated by all the people watching who then try to do it. Ah, oh, not quite good enough. Has to be 700 plus. Or it has to have int on it. Let's see, what's next? First of all, celebrate, because congratulations, those gloves are amazing. Second of all, what are you crafting for? If you're crafting for, say, cast on crit forbidden right, the next step is prefixes can't be changed, veiled chaos, to get something like, yeah, all right, next step, you probably want the global crit chance, chaos damage if you've dealt a crit recently. So that is prefixes can't be changed and veiled chaos. If you just wanted the decks, then you could just Eldritch craft it. If you just wanted something like Int, you could Eldritch craft it. If you wanted Attack Speed, prefixes can't be changed, Reforge Speed. Yes, you are correct, Tony. The top-end endgame players are buying increased global defenses. But increased global defenses, we're talking 80, 100x for a good one. Something like this, we're talking 20, 30x. So this is the step that you wear before you get the true disgusting endgame stuff. And I am totally fine with selling it for a decent amount. Sure, this whole stream is about crafting. So at this point, let's see. Hmm. Are you going for Righteous Fire specifically? What's the goal here? Because I can see a few directions that you can go with this. And which direction you go ultimately depends on who you're crafting it for. Such as... Okay, EA Ballista. There we go. So this is your current and you need better. The first thing to do would probably be, let's see, you have suffix, suffix, suffix. I would double check on Craft of Exile or PODB. I believe Aug Life, though, will only give you plus maximum life with cannot roll attacks. So I believe the next step would be Aug Life. And then are you hit-based EA Ballista or are you ignite-based Ballista? If you are hit-based, I would then do prefixes can't be changed, reforge crit for crit multi. If you're ignite, 
If you're Ignite, I would probably do... Prefixes can't be changed, reforge chaos for chaos res. As I feel like having good life, but plus gems and all that kind of outweighs the dot multi at this point. Or alternatively, you might want to try to recombinate into dot multi with the plus one gems, but that's going to be a lot harder and a lot more expensive. So it comes down to, can you afford to brick this item? If you can, then maybe you don't even worry about the aug life. Maybe you try to recombinate something that has plus one fire life dot multi with this and hope you transfer over the plus one all. So I see two paths there. For RF Inquisitor and Reforge keeping prefixes. Uh, you don't need the implicit there, right? Or are you doing the implicit because you have a Val RF? If you don't need the implicit, I'd Eldritch Craft it. If you do need the implicit on it, then yes. Do something like Reforge Keeping Prefixes. Or if you really just want... I think it's a 100% chance to get Fizz Reduction. One thing you could do is Multi-Mod, put a Prefix on... Well, you'd have to do prefixes can't be changed scour first. And then you do multi-mod prefix, prefixes can't be changed, and reforge fizz. Yep, no problem. The whole point of a stream is to help people out and give crafting advice. And who knows, maybe I'll profit from the crafting that I've been doing. I mean, I probably will. So why Gladiator over Champion? Does it clear maps faster? Yes, it does clear maps faster because you have easier access to Bleed Splode without sacrificing your gloves. And Adrenaline is not going to be up 100% of the time. Adrenaline is incredibly annoying to maintain. And the 20% more attack speed from Challenger Charges will apply to your Shield Charge on Gladiator. Worth keeping, or are you trying again? If you're using it for yourself, try again. If you're okay with selling and using a different pair, keep. When I originally did the build, I did keep a pair like this. The reason I did that is I had been crafting on a Warlord base. There were no Eldritch Implicits, and I hit Culling Strike. And I was like, oh, Culling Strike and Crit Chance? Well, I have to keep that. Those are really good. And I think at this point, I would keep going until I got the chaos damage. Again, that kind of comes down to your budget and how good of an item you need and how willing you are to spam more dense fossils to get another base. That'll definitely sell to someone, though, if you do want to sell it. Because there's cast on crit ice spear as well, but sometimes goes low life or CI. All the ones who are using two ones are wrong. That's something you do really early on when you want to play a cast on death build. For endgame, you use a shield or you use a bow. You never use two wands. Uh, my name is 10 want to buy new skills. If you have 12x left, then... I'm tempted to say you'll hit one more time within 12x. Personally, I would keep crafting, but I tend to be a very greedy crafter. I would probably keep crafting. It is not wrong to just say, all right, that's good enough for now. Craft attack speed, use it, and when you have more money, fix it later. Yeah, so in this case, Tony, you don't want Ashling. You can do prefixes, can't be changed, and Veiled Chaos. And it's much cheaper, has the exact same effect as Ashling. When do you want to switch from two wands to a shield? As soon as you can find a shield with plus one gems. Like, day one, ideally. Because dying over and over again sucks. And using two wands is a recipe for death. 
So using a Stygian rather than a Mage Blood is that legit? Yes, it is. I used a Stygian for everything up until my build showcase. It wasn't until after the build showcase that I ended up going for a Mage Blood. Uh, no, that will not get a second veil, Tony. That's not how Ashling works. Actually, I believe you have to clean off the Veiled mod before you can even apply Ashling to the item. How much would I list that for? So this is a completely blind guess. I have not looked at the market at all, but I would not be surprised if you're looking at the 100 Exalt range. I would price check level of all skill, level of cold skill, non-curse auras. And you know what? Let's, wait, can I do this? Uh, let's turn this on. Oh, nice. It goes back to the patch notes preview because that's the last time I used this. I don't know if I can use a browser source for this. I'm curious though. I want to try it. Oh, interesting. If the URL doesn't match exactly, it doesn't update live. Okay. So I can't use a browser source. I've never tried that before. Let's, let's try this then. So, all cold skill gems. All skill gems. Non-cursors from your skills. Amulet. 85x, 180x. Only two up. Let's look at any. All right, this one, I'm not going to count this. This is clearly absurdly underpriced, most likely because of the Zopex, which kind of limits functionality. This one is also corrupted, which is significantly worse. 75, all right, we're getting too closer to your amulet. 85, it has 9% increased dex. I don't think 9% increased dex really helps it here. It's got 34 crit multi though. It was also just listed. I could see it going for 85x. We've got one for 90. Again, crit multi, so they're targeting cast on crit ice spear. Something else to consider. I think 90 is still a little low for yours. Yours is really nice because you have that flexibility of an open suffix. And a lot of those high-end builds have so much crit multi that crit multi isn't that important on an amulet anyway. So yeah, I think about 100x. See, is this worth continuing to craft? Uh, so it is definitely worth continuing to craft. Depending on your setup though, I generally don't advise using Essence of Loathing and eating up one of your suffixes. So what I would do there is I'd probably multi-mod it for double ES and, or even potentially try to get life on it as a prefix with Elders Crafting and sell it to a different build. Cause it's very hard to work spell suppression into cast on crit forbidden, right? You'd have to give up a suffix on your boots, which is doable, incredibly difficult. You give up the chaos damage crit here, incredibly difficult. And so you're losing three suffixes from your gear. And that gets you 34, 40, 50, 60, 70, 88, I think, total. Which means you need to find 12% elsewhere, which is very, very difficult to do. That's a good one. Slightly unfortunate that the Veiled mod was the strength chance to avoid being ignited. But honestly, it's not a bad veiled. That's still a very, very solid grasping mail. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing you were crafting with loathing because you specifically needed the reservation efficiency. For something like this, it is a lot cheaper to just use double enlightened fours with a plus one shield. 
than it is to go for the reservation efficiency on your chess piece and give up a suffix. I know it might seem a little bit weird to say it like that, but when we're talking about a 100x item or more, I think you can find the reservation efficiency elsewhere. Oh, that caps you? Awesome, then. I've been trying to cap off of jewels. I'm very close, but I'm not quite there. I'm missing one stun jewel and then two ignite jewels. I think it's two. No, it's three. I'm missing three ignite jewels, one stun jewel. And I've used... Was it this one? That... No. Which one? There's one of these that I've used 47 rerolls on and still not hit it. It's really annoying. It's one of my clusters, I think. This one. I've used... 47 implicit rerolls on this. And sadly, I couldn't buy one because I couldn't find any for sale with the implicit. I might just make a bunch and make a video about me double corrupting them all. Because at this point, that's probably a better way to get it. Four twenty seven, not quite good enough. Five twenty, four ninety one. Yeah, I, so last league I was able to find people where I'd just give them 5x and they just run harvest until they get it. So far, I've only found people who want to sell me the individual crafts this time and it is just so tedious. I would love to find someone who's just running harvest and is willing to for a flat sum. Mass enchant things or mass implicit things. Selling those watcher's eyes. See if they want to buy more than one. Last time I asked this question, someone took all of my item level 87s. Well, they haven't said anything, so I'm going to assume they only want one. Maybe they're just loading in, though. Right. I'm keeping track of how much stuff sold for just to see. This has been basically zero effort put into selling the stuff from my feared farming. Oh, that is hard to price and sell. I like that a lot more than the Reddit gloves, though. The Reddit gloves that people keep talking about, huge mistake, huge waste of potential. Are there any other gloves with Culling Strike and 90 res or Culling Strike and one of a Temple Mod? Because that feels like your starting point. And from there, I would add 30 to 50% to whatever the price those are to account for having all of the mods. Before Recombinators existed, I would say you hit the money and can pretty much name your price. Because Recombinators exist, it's still insanely good but it is more achievable and more reproducible. Ah. Uh, I would guess that Headsman is better because that's effectively 15%. Mm, I guess it's not... Wait, it's... Call it 20, right, for Headsman? Trying to remember exactly what the node does, which you'd think I'd have it memorized by now. Yeah, Headsman is at 20. So it is 10% more damage as opposed to dot multi jewels. I mean, in theory, if you get something like life, attack speed, dot multi, dot multi on both jewels, it might be better because you are getting life and because you're getting attack speed. But unless you're talking about the best of the best on jewels, probably not worth it. And yes, this video will stay on YouTube for research purposes. That is entirely the point of streaming here on YouTube. I know a lot of my streams are just gameplay. I'm trying to move them towards things that have long-term value that I can say something like, here, I made a video 
talking about crafting yes gear and all that. And here's the stream where I did it live. You can see my process. You can see all my thoughts. And you can see me talking with chat about how to price items. Oh, that is so unfortunate. That it, and you couldn't have blocked anything, could you have? Because... Let's see. Ring. Yeah, you can't craft evasion on a ring. So unfortunate. So I can't promise that every stream I'll be helping out like this. There are some streams where I definitely want to just blast maps or whatever. The whole point of this stream is to help people. 100% all I'm doing today. All T4. It's probably still worth something, but I'm greedy. So, not worth it. All right, how should you upgrade this? Upgrade in what way? Because I see a lot going on here. I see some recoup, some mana regen. I see chaos to attacks, which makes me think something like poisonous concoction. I see life. I see strength. What's your goal for the item, or what's your goal for the character if you want to replace the item? You have this. Too scared to do something aside of the double. Honestly, the double here is totally fine. Given that you've got T1 curse and plus one power charge, I think you are totally fine with just multi-modding it. Also, shame on you. You haven't divined your all res. I know it probably doesn't matter. I'm still going to call you out on it. You also haven't defined your evasion rating. Those are useful stats. Okay, recoup and HP. If those are the only things you care about, I would roll a new ring. Now, I would roll a new ring with pristine fossils until you get something like tier one recoup and at least tier two life. How much can you ask for this amulet with 18% increased strength plus one to all chaos? Global crit multi, global crit chance, strength. I don't think the global crit chance adds much value. And I also don't think the chaos skill gems adds much value here. So you can ask whatever price that is generally worth for 13 to 15% increased strength plus T1 strength plus essence crit multi or essence strength plus T1 crit multi. I'd make the ranges a little bit wider to account for both. How should you price this? Chance to avoid elemental ailments, suppress spell damage, life, move speed, ignore the cold res, and ignore the open prefix. So I would look for prices based on the suppression, the avoid, the movement speed, don't worry about the onslaught and kill, and the 80 life. 669. Nice. 491. Not quite good enough. 268. Definitely not good enough. 366. Okay. Three builds. Um, I'm guessing your problem is that you have three builds. So what are the three builds? Maybe I can narrow it down a little bit. And to go back up in chat, because I was paying attention to in-game chat more than my stream chat, and I apologize for that. What do you think the change Bex hinted at will mean? Ooh, that's worth. It's very worth. I think that they are going to remove Harvest. I'm going to roll over this. This is greedy. So I think they're going to remove Harvest because most of the functionality of Harvest can be covered in other ways. I'm crafting on a non-influence base because Eldritch Implicits are incredibly powerful. And if I craft on an influence base, I limit myself to crafting for a specific build. Where if I craft this way, I can always influence slam it later. Especially if I want to do something influenced for the suffixes. Rather than the prefixes. I can't think of any influenced prefixes that I actually value enough. 
So I can influence slam it later. I can fracture items. I can do all that fun stuff. I could even recombinate. It just keeps my options open to not limit my base type. Fizz Trapper, Lightning Strike Champion, and Auto Bomber. And what do you want to do with the builds? So is your goal Uber Bosses? If you haven't even done before a Legion fight, I don't think your goal should be Uber Bosses in 318. I think your first goal should be completing your Atlas and doing things like the five-way or four-way Legion fight doing things like the regular bosses. And then once you achieve that, then make your goal the uber bosses. But going straight to uber bosses from here, not really a good way to do your goals because you're making a big jump rather than a little incremental jump. 40 of 40 challenges. So for all that, then I don't think that you should be going for uber bosses at all. A lot of the challenges have nothing to do with uber bosses. A lot of the challenges have to do with running a ton of maps. So you should focus on mapping. Also, you're not really going to be killing uber bosses smoothly and efficiently on a 7 exalt budget. So... What I would do from here is I'd pick one of those builds. I think that overall, the one that will be most rounded of those is probably the Lightning Strike Champion. The Auto Bomber, you're not going to be doing Uber Bosses without putting in hundreds of Exalts. The Seismic Trapper, you're going to have a lot of issues when mapping, especially doing things like the Altar Challenges if you haven't already done those. And especially with something like Endgame Grinds, Seismic Trap is going to be a lot worse than Lightning Strike. You can always buy completion for the Uber Bosses to get 40 of 40 challenges. You can always buy things like the Conditionals. Although, again, Lightning Strike is your best bet at doing Conditionals. The thing about the Auto Bomber... It's really, really limiting. If you're only going to map, like your goal was, I want to map and get a lot of currency and then do other stuff. Then we'd be talking auto bomber. Mm, I don't think that's quite good enough. It's close though, but I'm going to be greedy and roll over it. Yeah, posting the actual characters in Discord would be a lot easier because I don't know how much you've invested into each of those. If I assume that you're investing about seven exalt into each, I would expect that the auto bomber just sucks and that the seismic trapper can only kill bosses and that the lightning strike champion feels pretty good overall. But if you've invested, let's say, 20x into the auto bomber and 3x into the lightning strike, and 7x into the Seismic Trapper, that completely changes the discussion. So you're thinking of buying a Grasping Mail. What's the best option? 100% Global Fracture and start to craft or buy a great one? Depends on prices. I don't know the prices off the top of my head. In general, the more expensive the base cost is, the more likely you are to want to buy an already crafted one. I would assume that crafting it is going to cost you 30 to 40 X. So if a good crafted one is 30 to 40 X or less expensive than just the fracture, go with a crafted one. Hmm. Do you just want to map Philip or do you also want to do bosses? And when you say an incredible mapper, are we talking delirious or are we talking non-delirious? I think both of those are very good options. 
I think that if you're talking delirious mapping, then I'd actually go with a Corrupting Fever. Because I think Corrupting Fever overall handles it a little bit more smoothly with less investment. If you're talking non-delirious mapping, Righteous Fire, because it is way, way easier to be super tanky and tackle all content on Righteous Fire without having to think about it. Problem with Righteous Fire is without investment, it's not quite the best at doing delirious stuff due to the massive damage reduction that enemies get. Yeah, if you already have a Righteous Fire character, just keep pushing that. It won't disappoint you because it plays super smoothly. So you've been playing Poison Seismic, but you want to go deck stacking Ballista Totems. Yeah, I can see that. Personally, I've never been super impressed with Poison Seismic. I know it gets a lot of attention for solo stuff on Hardcore. I really don't think Seismic Trap is in a great spot in Softcore trade. At all. Be it Crit, be it Conversion, or be it Poison. I think it is fine. I think it is generally cheap. But it's annoying, and its greatest weakness of mapping feels a lot worse with all the changes and the Arch Nemesis modifiers on Magic Monsters. I suspect that I should have stopped on one of the very greedy things that I rolled past earlier. It's okay, though. It's why I'm doing it and wasting my money. Profane Bloom does not increase boss damage, and most bosses are not hexproof. They have less effect. And when something has less effect, that means the curse is applying to them. It's just not doing very much to them. Just like how I have reduced effective curses on me. Actually, bosses might be reduced as well. I could be wrong about reduced versus less. So I will get cursed if I go into a curse map, but it won't do anything to me. And let's see. Wait, where is a map? Oh, I know what I can use. I know what I can use here. Uh, wait, does Poor Joyce do it? I think Poor Joyce does it. No, never mind. Poydres does not put curses on. I don't have Putrid Cloister. All right, I'm just going to roll this and waste some money for the sake of demonstration. That's minus max. That does apply. Temp chains, that doesn't show up very well. Enfeeble doesn't show up very well. Want an elemental curse. Elemental weakness. Here we go. Dex, Spell Suppression, HP Shield, Recombination. All right, so I'm putting in this map, which I'm not going to even clear. So right now, 104, 102, 92. Even though I have Ellie Weakness on me, I have reduced resistances from the Ellie Weakness. If I take off my flask, well, okay, a lot of stuff breaks here. But ignore the cold res part. Ignore the cold res just breaking. I go down to 84 fire res and 72 lightning because of Ellie weakness. I put it back on. Bam. Curse has no effect on me. And that is the difference between reducing curse effect and Ellie weakness. Or and hexproof. So you're playing Cast and Crit Forbidden Right. You just got a Mage Blood. Both of your rings are 12% Maxia Synth. Do you think running an Onslaught instead of a Quicksilver is okay? You'll have significantly lower movement speed by running an Onslaught Flask instead of a Quicksilver Flask. Onslaught is 20%. 
and the Quicksilver right now is 54 times 1.95. So I get 105% movement speed from this flask. You will not be scaling the effect of Onslaught by flask effect. Flask effect only scales things that are numbers. So movement speed has a number there. It's 40% increased or 14% increased during flask effect. Then if we go over here to silver flask, this doesn't say any sort of numbers. This just says onslaught, and then it tells you what onslaught does. There's no number there, so it's not going to increase the effect of the onslaught. I would do it as a temporary measure. I would not do it as a permanent measure. Now, I've got a bunch of stuff here, which I crafted. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this crafting session. In terms of costs, I spent around 3 exalts and 700 chaos on bases. So that's about 7 total X just on the bases, and I think I was counting the Crusader exalts within that. Then I spent another seven, six, five, eighteen X on all the essences and the fossils and the resonators and all that. So this entire tab of stuff cost me about 25 X for the sake of demonstration. I think just this shield. Wait, is it this one? No. Just this shield, I think it was, will ultimately come close to paying for all of my costs. Never mind all the other stuff. Never mind all the things that I have to price check. And all that. Was this profitable? I mean, I've been doing this for about two and a half hours. So, yes. It was very profitable counting the time spent. I would have gone quite a bit faster if I wasn't demonstrating stuff, wasn't, you know, talking with chat. I also probably would have rolled over... Mm, talking's hard. I would have rolled over some things that were okay, but not perfect. So that's something to consider about going fast versus going slow. Best source of onslaught besides super expensive synth rings on kill boots. For a single target, your best source of onslaught is the synth ring. That's why it's super expensive. There's not really a better cheap answer. There is no cheap source of Onslaught. What well, builds are using Titanium? Builds that involve Word Loop, which are very, very rare. And people who are, for whatever reason, not investing into block. Because if you're not investing into block, then this doesn't necessarily matter. And you just want a big pile of ES. Also, sometimes you can get things on an ES shield which you wouldn't be able to get here, such as plus gems, such as reduced mana reservation. I didn't get those. Such as spell crit. Not for the spell crit here is good. I don't think it is necessarily that worth it to use an ES shield, but I know some people are, and so someone's going to buy it. I tried Onslaught Link to Tempest Shield. I wouldn't do it again. I also tried Onslaught Link to Vengeance. In both cases, it is incredibly inconsistent. And it feels like a waste of sockets. I, I have some videos where I use Recombinators. I don't have an overall Recombinator video. Because there's certain things about Recombinators that I never really nailed down. Depending on how they change when they go core, I think a Recombinator video is more of a thing for 319. And in terms of overall ease of crafting and stuff like that, oh look, it's a bot again with the same name as the last two bots I banned. Gloves are by far 
the easiest to craft. If you want easy to craft ES gear for your own build, oh, I'm, of course I'm assuming they're going core. They do great things with the game. So to start off with, this stuff, really easy to craft. Easiest thing to craft in terms of ES gear. Second easiest is chess pieces. Chess pieces might not be someone's best in slot, but they will be very good. And if you get good prefixes, you can always add influence suffixes later, which is a much more expensive step, but an incredibly profitable one. Helmets are pretty easy to craft. There's not a good market for them. The problem with the market for helmets is this isn't influenced and it's pretty hard to influence and enchant it and all that. It takes a while. It's a pain. You have to use a lab runner, etc. Then in terms of boots, these are also somewhat hard to craft. Arguably, the best thing to do is to craft them with chaos spam. Because you can get T1 or T2 movement speed fairly easily on these. And then something that's much harder to craft, much more niche, would be something like these belts. I don't advise these unless you really need one for your build. It's going to be expensive, it's going to be tedious, and it's going to be a pain. I also don't really advise these shields unless you need one for your build. Because this is just better in most cases. So you have a T3 28% fractured bow regalia. What should you do with it? Throw dense fossils at it. Or potentially even throw Essence of Loathing at it. Maybe Essence of Woe. Try to get some good ES on it. Maybe get some mana reservation efficiency. And you should be able to sell it from there. Hmm. I didn't see anything where GGG hinted at axing recombinators. And most of the absolutely insane items can be fixed by nerfing recombinators in a way that doesn't affect the average item you're trying to make. Because what you can do is you can use recombinators right now to get multi-fracture items like uh, this. They can nerf that so that you're limited to a single fracture by just tying the fracture to the base. Uh, no, no, I said that vengeance is a bait. I'm agreeing with subtractum. <laughs> no, no, I am 100% agreeing with subtractum on that. Vengeance is a bait because if you have something like vengeance, Cast on crit, skill, onslaught, that's one, two, three, four links. There's so many links in this build. There's so many things you want to use. I wish I could add more links to my items. I'm tempted to just legitimately use an unset ring instead of a synth ring here. Because I want to add more gems to my build. I'm never going to use four of them for inconsistent onslaught that also gets me killed to reflect. Vengeance will get you killed to reflect, which makes it bad, because then you have to watch out and think about Fizz Reflect. And on top of having to do that, it won't give you Onslaught that often because it triggers about once a second, even with the cooldown recovery rate, and it's like a 30% chance. So, yeah. Not at all a good thing. Huge bait. Uh, so when you're saying the same damage and ES, or same ES and more damage, as opposed to what? Because that has about half of the ES of my gloves. And I lose the max cold res, which means I would need to put max cold res on my chest which means I lose, I believe it's non-curse aura effect, 
which means I lose damage and I lose res and I lose armor. The socketed plus AoE would be quite nice for auras. The spell damage, chaos damage to spells would probably end up being slightly more damage. But you're giving up a lot of defense and then you're giving up other damage elsewhere. And so that feels more like a budget or starter option that is very good, not a min-max option. Yeah, doesn't feel like something I'd go for in terms of min-max. I wonder, how much does my damage change if I just port this into my current character's POB? The average hit goes up by 6.5%, which at the amount of damage that I'm doing is technically a lot. But my ES goes down by a lot. My ES goes down by a few hundred. And in terms of total DPS, because I lose some crit chance, I lose some aura effect and all that, and I have to fix decks elsewhere, then it's looking like I gain very little DPS, and I probably actually lose damage overall. And I don't really... Okay, in terms of a reservation, it means I could have another implicit on my shield. I don't think that's worth it. Any bow base builds that can match Corrupting Fever Tornado Shot below 50x with a mapping focus. Something like Explosive Arrow probably can. And that's about it. But I also don't know prices for anything. Because I haven't played Corrupting Fever in about a month now. And I haven't played Explosive Arrow in like four months now. So, assuming prices haven't changed much. It's bad because that's four links. That's four links. What are you giving up for that? All of my links are already full and I want to add more things to my links. Yeah, getting off-screened when popping Corrupting Fever felt very bad. That's the one big downside of that build, unfortunately. Although, what I often did on Glacier is I just pop into the entryway to the second area. Yeah, but I already have 35 mil DPS. Why do I need Culling Strike? I would rather have something like Frost Shield and then just die less because I have Frost Shield than have a little bit more damage when I already have more damage than I need for everything in the game. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a really nice bow. Congratulations on that Recombinator. Now, uh, the best way to farm Imprint Beasts is to pick the Atlas node for it, which is Hunt for Krasian and blast low-tier maps. Then you can use either Einhar missions or Beast Scarabs. I forget the exact tier of map you want. I know lower is better. I think the only thing I would consider changing significantly would be the Ashes of the Stars. It's really good, but I don't think it's irreplaceable. I think you can get some absolutely insane, like, non-curse aura effect, maybe plus one all gems ES crit multi amulet, and get reservation efficiency made up for elsewhere. And that might replace Ashes. Everything else, I would just make 
the item slightly better than it is currently, but use the same general thing. I do not have a POB, but if you look in the video description, you can find my profile and import my character from there. Or you can just do that in POB automatically by putting in my account name, which is the same as my YouTube. I guess the other thing where I might replace is Crown of the Inward Eye. Because plus one max power charge crown, hard to replace. But, but, in theory, with recombinators, you can do plus one max on a corrupted helmet, then plus one max as an explicit, and then minus 12 to chaos res. It would cost an absurd amount. I don't want to know how much that would cost. That would probably cost a thousand exalts to do, because you're rolling really good items bricking them, and then recombinating them, and it's all on double influence bases with elevated mods. Short of that, I do not think there is a way to replace this without losing something elsewhere. Now, you could lose armor, for example, and replace it and get mana reservation because you need mana reservation efficiency to do something else in your build. You could lose the power charge or lose the transfiguration and get res on it because you need res. But if you don't need other things, this is a very hard item to replace because it gives an amazing mix of damage and defense. I mean, but then I'm losing something else. So if I lose the power charge on a helmet and pick up a power charge on a ring, Either I'm making another incredibly difficult crafted item, or I'm losing something on my ring to add the power charge. Like, am I losing Onslaught? Am I losing Despair? Am I losing Crit Multi? Once you get to a certain level of min-max, making one choice is not about just adding something to your build. It's about what you take away. Okay, so here's the thing, Tony. Now I am spending something like 2,000 exalts to add plus one power charge as an implicit without losing anything else. Because I need the strength. I need the Despair, I need the Crit Multi, and I need the Non-Channeling. Without changing other items elsewhere. It gets very, very hard to justify replacing things once you get to this level of min-max. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying that in most cases, it probably isn't worth it. Yeah. Because to go back a little bit, since sometimes nuance gets lost in these discussions, I'm not saying you're wrong about this stuff. What I am saying is, in the original context, I was talking about replacing one item without changing anything else in the build. So I was saying that there really aren't things where I can just swap one item and leave everything else. That if I change one thing, I have to change another, and I have to change a third. Which is a natural step in min-maxing, and about the point where I've gotten to, where I could replace this with a crit multi-strength despair ring with ES on it very easily, because it's the same stats. But changing it to a power charge ring is very difficult, because now I need to move something around elsewhere. Yeah. That's what I was going for. And you want to see this build in action. You know what? Let's do something with this build. What do I want to do with this build? What do I have? Oh, I know what I'm set up for. Right? I still have these. I have around 35 mil DPS, I think. Plus or minus a bit. And I feel like I don't really need more DPS. If anything, I want just a little bit more armor and a little bit more energy shield. 
because my DPS feels like I can already handle everything in the game, no problem. But there's a couple things that if I'm too careless will kill me. So this is an uber uber elder. And he's going to do power from the void. Alright. Let's go over here, go over here, wait for stuff to spawn. Oh. Good thing I blocked there, that would have actually killed me, because I was just standing in everything. Let's pop this over here. Gotta hit stuff sometimes. Okay. And you're phased. Oh, uh, you're gonna come back, please. Okay, he's phased. I have to say, in terms of this build, while it can absolutely do 100% delirious tier 16 conqueror maps, that is not really where this build gets to shine. Where this build truly gets to shine, uber bosses. Because all you really need on a lot of builds to shine in the 100% delirious stuff is a headhunter. All right, you're doing your thing. I don't know that I needed to dodge that, actually. I did, though. And where's Shaper? All right, I don't need to dodge the Elder's Slam, but I don't want to get hit by multiple things while doing it. Now Shaper's going to shoot me. I'll make a puddle there. I did a few sims. I got bored of doing sims, though. They, they're they okay, but they take a really long time to do. Now, the goal here is going to be to just gank Shaper as soon as he's vulnerable. Oh, he teleported away. Come back. You're about to be vulnerable. There we go. Bye, Shaper. Bye, Elder. So that was... Maven witnessed Uber Uber Elder. If I get a Watcher's Eye here, I will ID it. I did not get a Watcher's Eye. Uh, I got Slink Boots and an Opal Ring. Both of which are probably going right back on the floor. I don't know. Maybe the Slink Boots sell for something. Mark of the Shaper goes on the floor, though. But with that, I think this is where I'm going to call it. Hopefully everyone found the crafting and the crafting tips to be informative. This will stay up as a VOD on YouTube. If you want more content, then be sure to subscribe. And if you want to talk about more crafting stuff, I have a very active Discord community, the link down in the description below, where we talk crafting quite a lot. There's even a channel for bragging about how good your crafted items are. Beyond that, Thanks again to everyone who tuned in. Thank you for everyone, including Quantum, who has helped support me by becoming a patron or channel member. You can do that again by following the links down in the description below. For now, hope you enjoyed, and catch you later.